Good morning. My name is Cece Dykus. I'm the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs of St. Thomas University School of Law. Welcome to the St. Thomas University School of Law graduation for the 2012 class. As we welcome the procession, let me explain some of the customs and traditions. The graduates entering are followed by the mace that is carried by the law faculty member with the most seniority. The graduates and all participants in the ceremony are clothed in academic caps and gowns. Persons with graduate degrees also have hoods. Each graduate level college degree has a special distinctive hood. The colors on the hoods have special significance. A black shell is silk lined with the colors of the institution conferring the degree. For St. Thomas School of Law, the colors are blue and white. The hood is then bordered with velvet of the signifying the field of learning to which the degree pertains. With the law degree, the color purple designates that status. The graduates will receive their hoods as part of today's ceremony. Some students are wearing various cords of color. Each different colored cord represents the student's participation in a student organization. Students who are displaying gold cords are graduating with honors, cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude. These cords are given to the students who have achieved academic excellence. The students are followed in by the members of the law school faculty and administration. Following the faculty members of the platform committee are comprised of this president of the university, deans and members of the university and law school board of advisors, trustees and other dignitaries.
I now present to you the Dean of St. Thomas University School of Law, Douglas Ray. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us on this very special day. I ask that you stand or <clears throat> remain standing for the invocation by law school chaplain, the Reverend Monsignor Andrew Anderson, which will be followed by the national anthem led by St. Thomas Law student, Rebecca Duffield. Two weeks ago, Sister Death embraced one of our academic members of the family, Professor Emeritus Richard Malloy. For you women and men who today are receiving your Juris Doctor degree, I would ask you to take note that Professor Malloy's last act was to submit to a law review an article that he had been working on, and he did so just before he was embraced by Sister Death. Would you join me first in a moment of silence, commending his soul to Almighty God that he may now be in God's house, with Mary and all the saints. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, now rest in peace. O God, as we gather to honor those who will this day receive their Master of Arts degree in intercultural human rights or environmental sustainability and those who will receive their Juris Doctor degree, we ask that you gift them with your wisdom, that you bless all here, that those who will be honored this day will use their knowledge and skills to further the never-ending quest for justice, which has as its foundation the dignity of the human person and the common good. Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the peril fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or the
Please be seated. Members of the graduating class, Monsignor Casal, Father O'Neill, Monsignor Anderson, trustees, advisory board members, faculty, staff, distinguished guests, family and friends of the graduates, <clears throat> it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to our spring 2012 commencement. It is a special honor to welcome to our celebration the Honorable Rosemary Barquette of the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, who will address us as our commencement speaker. I'd also like to recognize a few of the many special people we have on the stage today. We're honored to have with us Mr. Herman Russomano, Chair of the Law School Board of Advisors. <laughs> Father Patrick O'Neill, <clears throat> the former president of the university who was instrumental in founding this law school we celebrate today. And Mr. Stanley Tate, <clears throat> a member of the University Board of Trustees, who is a good friend of law school. <clears throat> Thank you all for helping us celebrate this special day. <clears throat> it is a day we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates, a day we welcome them into a profession in which they will have the opportunity to spend their lives helping others, and a day to say thank you <clears throat> to all of you who made this day possible. This is a particularly special graduation because we helped the university celebrate its 50th anniversary this year. The story of how the university left Cuba 50 years ago and reestablished itself in Florida is truly an inspiring one. This is also the 25th anniversary of this law school's very first graduation. To help us celebrate <clears throat> this significant milestone, we are privileged to have members of the graduating classes of 1987 and 1988 on the platform in the role of Grand Marshals. <clears throat> I ask them to stand so we can thank them for both their leadership and the trust they put in a then young institution. We have much we celebrate today. Most importantly, we celebrate our graduates, the kind of people they are, and the kind of futures they will have. While in law school, they have won national and state honors in trial and appellate advocacy. They have made our student organization stronger. They've sponsored special events for the community, and they've reached out to help the less privileged in many ways, partnering with our faculty and with local lawyers to provide over 16,000 hours of volunteer legal services this year alone. In April, we held a public service awards reception and presented commendations to 42 graduates who had provided individually between 100 and 600 hours of pro bono legal service. For those graduates who are with us today, I ask that you stand that we may recognize this tremendous accomplishment. They are just a few <clears throat> of the many law students who are already making a difference in our society. To the graduates, on behalf of the faculty, I hope this has been a transforming experience for you. As dean, I've had the opportunity to meet hundreds of successful St. Thomas Law graduates. They play leading roles in law firms, in business, in government, in the judiciary. And what they've told me is that as the close relationships with our faculty, it's our clinical and externship programs, our skills programs, and those community engagement programs that have prepared them well for careers of success. And I know that you too are prepared. As lawyers, <clears throat> you will be the peacemakers, 
and the communicators of our society. You will be the people who make things happen and help others realize their dreams. You'll be trusted for, with caring for some of the most important things in our lives. We'll trust you to protect our liberty, our livelihoods, our families, <clears throat> our property, and our businesses. Whether you do this in the private sector or in public service, you will make a difference. The message that we, as the faculty, send each one of you today as you walk across this stage <clears throat> is that we have tested you. We have tested you again, and we declare that you are ready to take these next steps and to assume these awesome responsibilities. Today, we also celebrate <clears throat> what you mean to each other. You came here as strangers, <clears throat> and over the course of these three years, you found time to make friends, some who are already like family. Some who like family will be friends for life. And I hope you'll take time as you look around the room and as you come to our reception after graduation, just to think about what some of these people have come to mean to you and maybe uh, take a moment to tell them how much you appreciate them. <clears throat> and speaking of appreciation, one of the most important roles of this ceremony <clears throat> is to celebrate the support and love from families and friends who made this possible. Today, you create a moment they will not forget and the ideal Mother's Day present for tomorrow's celebration. Today is a day of pride and a day of memories. I know that when my children graduated from their various schools, <clears throat> I sat in the audience and I remembered earlier times in their lives. I remember days of pride, but I also remember days of challenge. I remember days of being concerned for their future. Today, your family and friends relive those moments, and they experience that sense of warmth, that sense of pride, and in many cases, that sense of relief that make this day so very worthwhile. <clears throat> And to give the graduates a chance to say thank you once again, I'd ask first that the parents, the grandparents, the brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, and other relatives who've helped raise our graduates stand and remain standing. And I'd now... <clears throat> I'd now ask the spouses, the partners, the children, the significant others, the friends, and all of you who've supported them through law school to stand and join them, and ask our graduates to join me in standing and applauding all of these wonderful people. Thank you, you may be seated. <clears throat> we would never have reached this moment at all, of course, without the special efforts of our caring faculty and staff. I am privileged to be part of their institution and admire what they do. Earlier I talked about an opportunity for a life of service, <clears throat> and these faculty members have devoted themselves towards serving your futures. They're experts, they're nationally recognized experts who've written over 50 books and hundreds if not thousands of law journal articles, but they put teaching first and they put the future of their students first. <clears throat> the members of our adjunct faculty who are with us today are distinguished lawyers and judges who take time away from jobs and families to come to the law school to teach you <clears throat> and share their commitment to professionalism and to all of you. All the members of our faculty, full-time and part-time, <clears throat> are counselors, mentors, role models, guides, and friends. The members of our staff share the same commitment, and their how-can-I-help-you attitude <clears throat> is what sets our law school apart. As you have already figured out, there is a pattern to my remarks, and it's about appreciation, a chance to say thank you, and I'd ask that our 
full-time, part-time faculty and staff stand so that we can all express our appreciation for the dedication they show to these jobs. Now, my final thank you of this introduction and welcome <clears throat> is to the president of our university. It is my privilege to introduce the Reverend Monsignor Franklin Casal. His commitment to social justice inspires our university and our law school, and his support of this law school is instrumental to our success. Please join me in thanking him for all he does. Thank you, Dean. Good morning, everyone. We celebrate success today, the success of our students and our university. This is our 50th anniversary year, and this graduation and the graduation this afternoon will be the completion of a full year of celebration, during which we had the honor of hosting the uh, Sup Supreme Court Justice Ant Antonin Scalia. I salute you, our graduates, today for all that you've accomplished. I salute your families and friends. I thank Dean Ray and his administration and faculty for providing you with a firm legal education that will make you leading lawyers in this community and others throughout the country. I also thank the Honorable Rosemary Barquet for her commitment to legal justice and also for her support and being a wonderful friend of our law school through the years. I extend to you the best wishes and the congratulations of Archbishop Thomas Wenske, the sponsor of St. Thomas University, who at this very moment is in Rome making his regular five-year report to Pope Benedict XVI about the state of the Archdiocese of Miami and because we are sponsored and are an entity of the Archdiocese of Miami, the state of St. Thomas University, and our law school. And I can tell you that the state of St. Thomas University and its law school is excellent. I greet our trustees, our law school board of advisors, and I also thank all of you who helped make this day possible for these men and women who are the newest group of lawyers in this great country of ours. God bless your future. There's a hero If you look inside your heart you don't have to be afraid of what you are. There's an answer if you search within yourself and the emptiness you felt will melt away. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you it's a long road when you face the world alone no one reaches out a hand for you to hold you can find love if you search within your soul and the sorrow that you know will melt away then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside 
and you know you can survive. So when you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong, and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you. Oh, 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 Lord knows Dreams are hard to follow But don't let anyone tear them away Hold on There will be tomorrow In time you'll find the With the strength to carry on And you cast your fears aside And you know you can survive And you feel like hope is gone Look inside you and be strong And you'll finally see the truth That a hero lies in you that a hero lies in